Hey Church, welcome to your Thursday devotional. Uh, Each Thursday this year we'll be exploring an encounter with Jesus from one of the four Gospels. And we're currently making our way through a series for Lent. So far we have encountered Jesus in the desert and on the mountain, and today we encounter him by a well. The passage is John 4, 5 to 42. Press pause and have a read. So this is probably a pretty familiar passage for many of us. And so what I'd like to do today is see how this passage fits in with Lent as we look forward to Easter. This encounter with Jesus prefigures his sacrificial work in a number of ways. And we'll explore this under four headings. Firstly, where it takes place, then with whom it takes place, then uh, the woman's thirst, and finally, Jesus' solution. So firstly, where it takes place. This is a most unlikely setting. Jews hated Samaritans, but here is Jesus in Samaria. The Jews would go out of their way to avoid this region, but seemingly Jesus goes out of his way to go through it. Why? Well, it's a picture of his incarnation and his mission, isn't it? Jesus' sacrifice began long before his time on the cross, although that was the culmination. Uh, For God to become man and dwell amongst sinful people is an enormous act of self-giving love. And here in the midday sun, Jesus is reminding us of his grace and mercy coming down to be among the least likely. So that's where it takes place. Secondly, with whom it takes place? A a woman, right? Men didn't speak to women in this culture. Uh, Some hardcore Jewish teachers even taught that a man shouldn't speak to his wife in public. That's crazy to to think like that, right? Uh, Women were second-class citizens often, and even bigger news is the fact that this woman he's speaking to is a Samaritan. Uh, as we said before, Samaritans were hated by the Jews. They were leftovers from a bygone era when uh, Israel had been taken over by Babylon. Uh, the remaining Israelites intermarried with the Babylonians, uh, which to the Jews was a big no-no, and practiced this uh, ver- uh, bastardized version of the Jewish religion. They were socially, religiously, and racially outcasts, and as we said before, hated by the Jews. But here was Jesus, a Jew, speaking to a woman from Samaria, In addition, we find out uh, that even the sinful Samaritans considered her to be sinful, right? She'd been married five times and she was now living with a man that wasn't her husband. And this is another reminder of Jesus' Easter sacrifice. No one is beyond his reach. He spent time with those in society who were thought as useless, those who religions thought were sinful and who uh, thought were lost, people who themselves felt lost and alone and outcast. So, uh, where it happened, with whom it happened. Thirdly, the woman's thirst. Uh, Jesus asked the woman for a drink. Right? He's thirsty. He's in the hot midday sun. He asked for a drink, and then uh, he dives straight into the deep spiritual stuff, um, using water as a metaphor, a metaphor for satisfaction and fulfillment. So Jesus identifies that she was searching for fulfillment in relationships, in marriages, uh, and he promises that he can provide water that will never run out, satisfaction that will never run out. And as we read this, we're reminded we're like this woman, aren't we? We all long for something, uh, and we often ignore the fact that it could be spiritual. And like this woman, the very thing we chase to find that fulfillment is the very thing that leaves us hungering for more. Now, for us, it may not be a relationship as it is for this woman, but we search in other places that maybe job or money or seeking approval or having fun or holidays or partying or love. This emptiness and a constant search for fulfillment, it's a reminder of our sin, isn't it? That's why Jesus calls us to come to him. The refreshment we need is in him, the one who provides wholeness, life, love, acceptance, purity, forgiveness. And those who are fasting during Lent are tapping into this, right? To deprive oneself of these other forms of satisfaction allows us to lean more into Jesus and the life that he gives. And finally, Jesus' solution. Well, Jesus' solution is to come to him for life and fulfillment. He makes that clear to the woman, saying, Drink from me and you'll never be thirsty again. But she changes the subject. Maybe she's not ready to go spiritually deep. Uh, And instead she brings up a theological debate uh, about the appropriate location for worship. And so Jesus rolls with this new topic of conversation, but guides it back to his main point. When they start talking about worship, he says that true worship is one day worship in spirit and in truth. 
And in this little exchange, Jesus shows the woman and asks how we can drink from the living water that he provides. Just to worship. But to understand this, we need to remember that the New Testament uh, was written in Greek. Uh, and in Greek, the word that's translated as worship literally means to kiss towards. To kiss towards, right? What a powerful word that Jesus uses in this exchange. A woman searching for love and finding no satisfaction. It's all in a kiss. You kiss towards God and your deepest longings will be fulfilled. See, when we seek satisfaction in something, we worship it. That is, we kiss towards it. We give it our love, our attention, our affection. And this woman was kissing towards men, to, towards relationships, towards human love. She was worshipping, hoping to find love and fulfilment. Jesus comes and says, you're thirsty. And your thirst isn't being quenched, is it? Not even the greatest marriage will do. You are a worshipper. But you need to worship in truth. Kiss towards me and you will not be left wanting. The bottom line of the metaphor is this. We're all thirsty. And the only way we can quench that thirst is through worshipping the one true God. So to wrap up. So at Easter, we're given even more clarity about this whole conversation, right? Because Jesus' death and resurrection prove his credentials as the provider of living water. And they also open access, open up access for us to worship and to receive this. His death and resurrection are the remedy for our thirst, but at the same time, they also offer forgiveness for our wayward desires in searching for life in all the wrong places. At the well, we're pointed towards the cross where we see God go out of his way to come to an undesirable place, meet with undesirable people, and provide through his death and resurrection living water for all who worship him, the risen Lord. Now let's pray in the words of Jesus. I'm going to use verses 13 and 23 and 24 and turn them into all prayer. Let's pray together. Jesus, we have been drinking from dry wells, so we call on you, the living water, so that we may never thirst again. Help us, instead of seeking satisfaction in the wrong things, to drink from you that we may receive eternal life, the true fulfilment that we all need. May we learn what it means to kiss towards you as we worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen.